So the three shows that are going to be in the so-called Filoni-verse are Rangers of the New Republic, The Mandalorian, and Ahsoka. In today's video, I am going to theorize on what the Filoni-verse could mean for the sequels. Okay, let's get started. So far, nothing in The Mandalorian has connected to the sequel trilogy. So what does this mean? Well, it could mean they are decanonizing it, but I wouldn't want that for the sequel fans. So what may happen is that they make an alternate timeline. So how, so how will they do this? Well, first we need some evidence. First is the decimation of Corvus under the magistrate of Morgan Elsbeth. We learned that her speciality was bleeding planets' resources and building Imperial starships. Second, is the HK-47 droids bearing the logo of the 7th Fleet. Now Corvus could be referenced to Corvus Minor from the Final Command, which is the third entry in the original Thrawn trilogy. And finally, Ahsoka mentions Grand Admiral Thrawn by name. It's not even a hint at his name. It's literally by name. So if you read the Thrawn trilogy, rebuilding the Imperial Navy is a huge plot point, a trilogy that also happens to take place five years after the Battle of Endor, the exact same year as the Mandalorian in canon. So the evidence should be clear to everyone that Thrawn is going to be the big villain in the middle of this giant climactic story. First of all, it seems as though they are planting seeds for retelling of the trilogy with Ezra possibly filling in the role of Joris Sabayoth who was the crazed Jedi used by Thrawn. Thrawn only trusted the Emperor and he had to prepare the Empire for the threat that he only knew was coming and that was the Yuzong Vong. In canon these creatures are called the Grisks. If Thrawn is the main threat then it paves a way for the Grisks to arrive, and let's call it Phase 2. And this means we could have the whole entire Thrawn trilogy and the Yuuzhan Vong War in canon. And maybe Luke has a wife and kid just like in Legends. And this is one of the things that the hardcore fans did not like about the sequels, is that they didn't mention the two greatest wars post-Battle of Endor. So how will this tie into the sequels? Well, for a while now, there was a rumor that the Filoniverse will use the World Between Worlds to create an alternate timeline where the sequels never happened. And it seems as though that it is becoming more and more true, especially if you look at the Soka Tano logo for her show, it looks just like the World Between Worlds. So shout out to Dr. Doomcock, who called this a while back. The World Between Worlds was created in Star Wars Rebels, which Dave Filoni made and it connected all time and space. So, and I have this other theory. What if Filoni knew that they needed a backup to the sequels? What if the sequels failed to make all fans happy like they did? That's why I think he had those two or three episodes in Rebels where he would create the world between worlds and when it would come into play. He needed a way to fix the sequels. I mean, look how everyone is enjoying The Mandalorian. I have not seen one person say they don't like The Mandalorian. Anyway, I know that this was a lot to take in, but if you have to make sure to watch this video again, please watch it. Or watch the video I posted in the description. He does a lot better way of explaining this theory than I do. I think this will really change the Star Wars universe. I think it will be really cool and it will bring all the Star Wars fans back together, especially since the sequel fans will be happy since the sequels are not decanonized and the people that didn't like the sequels will be happy also. But that's all I have for you today. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and remember, may the force be with you always.